Um, so um, there's this news trending, okay, um, mm -hmm. concerning A Y Puyu. Um, yeah, which had him saying a few things. I mean, for the past few days, um, checking on his uh, social media handles, specifically TikTok, he seemed to be doing subtle jabs at Ghanaians. And um, I saw him post a particular video where he explained that he had issues with you. So um, we just wanted to hear your side of the story. So to begin with, we sure. uh, appreciate if we know who we are actually talking to, for the sake of the viewers. Okay, um, my name is Alfred. Um, in the entertainment space, they call me Mr. Aboga. Yeah, I actually have two nicknames, actually. So, but Mr. Aboga is what people know me for. Um, I'm a music producer. Um, to blog back then, um, I had a blog called Loud on GH. Um, so, yeah, basically, that's how people should know me by. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how did um, you begin working with um, AY Puyo? How did it all start? Yeah. So, with AY Puyo, um, he had a manager at that time, uh, Timer. Mm -hmm. I actually left social media for like had to deal with personal stuff. So when I came back to social media, um, AYP tagged me in one of his skits or a cover song, something. So when he tagged me as a joke, I shared the post on my wall and I was like, who is this guy? I need to sign him. So he came born here like oh so like who are you working with so he mentioned my friend's name and i'm like oh then i'll just talk to timer and we will know the way forward if there is anything timer will um give him feedback I was like oh so i spoke with timer timer was like oh, they just want to um do stuff and so people get to know him and they can cash out on Facebook, eh, on YouTube. Okay. So I told him, well, Vimba. since it's those things, so why don't we put up a song to that? And since I started making beats at that time, I needed to because of me. Oh, Sorry, um, I needed to create an original beat so that he would put something on it. So I played it myself. And the chorus should be like so. The initial chorus I created was "I'm a good everybody wash out." That was mm -hmm. the whole mm -hmm. timer. They were playing around it and then they added some few stuff to it, like "me up on chain, man." So when they finished, they sent back the vocals to me. And I mixed and mastered it. I told them to do a video like um, as if he was in the studio recording a song. They did it. They brought it. We created a page. Mm -hmm. by Poyo. We created a YouTube account. No, the YouTube account was there already. But he had to change. And um, we sponsored this short video. Mm -hmm. And because people, I think because people were at home at that time, I think the COVID time, a lot of people got to see the ad. So they reacted to it and boom, it was everywhere. So we quickly had to create a DistroKid account and then upload the song okay. and put it on stores. And DistroKid is one of the fastest uh, distributors. They can put your song out there in some few hours. So it was um, the best option for us at that time. So we did that and um, the rest was uh, history. So that's how so you as if I, I signed him or I'm his manager. I'm just a producer. It was just a producer artist relationship. And even that, can you believe I didn't have direct communication with Ewa Poyo? I didn't have direct communication with Ewa Poyo until 
2022. Apart from the GOAT song that you produced and then, you know, assisted in writing, um, did you <clears> ever <throat> work with him on any other projects? Well, as time goes on, um, Timer will ask for a beat and um, they will take some of the beats and work with it. Um, like there is this song, Equia Don't Go. Um, okay. I played that beat as well. We actually had a lot of songs, yeah. but we were trying to put it together as an EP instead of singles. So as we speak now, mm -hmm. I have about nine to ten songs of unreleased Puyo songs mm -hmm. on my PC right now as we speak. Okay. So um, let's delve into the contract. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. He posted some screenshots. Mm -hmm. of your contract with him where he captioned termination of a record label contract i believe you you've come across it yeah i've uh, seen people have sent no. me just okay so um did you actually sign him or it was more of you know a okay. family family relation let me let me explain how this contract um after I had direct communication with AY Boyo was busy, and that was the time he called me mm -hmm. saying his manager dumped him and okay. um, where they were staying in East Legon, the woman mm -hmm. sacked them from the house because mm -hmm. there was a few issues blah, blah. it was a very and I don't really want to go into that side because um, it's it's very sensitive. So the long and short of the story is they owe where they are staying. So he can't pay and um, he went back to, uh, what's that place? Abusukai, where his mom lives. Okay. And it was hard for him to even go out. Of the room because he became popular and all of a sudden he's back to the hood with nothing as he claims so i was like ah so if that's the case for you um, i can get you a place to stay i can rent a place for you to stay but this is too sudden stay there for like two three months and then i'll gather money and get you a nice place so while we're discussing where to stay and all that he why can't i just um, beg the woman who sacked them from the house mm -hmm. so i said okay cool I'm, I'm not really that kind of person but for his sake i'll do it so i took phone i called a woman the woman um, resides in, in the uk i begged mm -hmm. this woman like boyo was my son I begged her so much. I, I like it was a day to day call, three days continuous. Mm -hmm. So the final uh, decision was about his own place when I'm ready to make him move out. And then we all agreed. So Puyo came to the house again. Um, the woman also accepted him. He was there for a while, and the woman decided that, okay, um, he wants to invest into Poe's um, crafts. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's a good idea. If she knows that, uh, the boy can have a new start. Yeah. So um, for one year, the woman said, okay, she wants to see how he's going to behave first mm -hmm. before she start investing. So... It was more like putting him under some sort of review. So we were still going on with it. And the woman said, okay, Alfred, before I can put myself into this, I need to make sure there is something official going on because I can't just put my money in there with no official documents. So, mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I can draft a, a contract for you both. So that you guys, I, I will make sure the contract is I'm sure the contract works. It's like, no, she wants to go anyway. She can pull herself into the hole. 
I, okay, fine. But this is the case. So what do we do? Do you contract? He said, yes. I'm like, see, if you sign this contract, you are not going to do things your way because mm -hmm. people are going to put money into this and you have to follow everything that we tell you. Mm -hmm. So we signed a contract. We both agreed on it. I didn't force him to sign contract. I gave him the contract to read. Mm -hmm. I told him to send the contract to a lawyer or whoever he trusts. Mm -hmm. And it's, if it's not good, I can just support him as a big brother and we can move on. Mm -hmm. No contract. And he said, okay, since the woman wants to invest, let's, let's just do it. I'm like, okay, fine. So he signed the contract and I presented a contract to the woman. This woman took the contract and said, yeah, um, there are some things in there she doesn't understand. We didn't talk about taking his socials, his TikTok, his Facebook, his um, Instagram, all those things. I'm like, oh, it's not necessary because, mm -hmm. yeah, he's, he's the content creator. So let's leave those things to him to take care. And me knowing who has been taking some coins from TikTok, and I know when we take that from him, it's just so Puyo was controlling his TikTok. Uh, I think the Facebook, I was controlling the Facebook, but he had access to he had access to everything. He had access to YouTube. He had access to uh, the Facebook account. But if I need to post something, I I I post it myself for professional, mm -hmm. you know, sake. So I did all that, and that's how the the whole contract thing came came into existence. That's how the contracts appeared. So for him, Puyo, he knows the contract was signed because we wanted to get an investor to help him, and not because mm -hmm. I want to have a link with his career or I want to be his boss or I want to be a manager. I didn't, I don't even have that time. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm too busy for, 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 for that. And moreover, I'm not in Ghana. It's, I'm very mm -hmm. far away to manage someone in Ghana whilst being here. It's, it's, it's too much work. Okay. The contract. Yeah. And for the termination, when mm -hmm. he started misbehaving again, first it was with the woman, the woman got very angry. The woman said okay. She doesn't want him in the house again. So I had to rent a place for him by force. I moved him to a place in Ashalibuchi where he was mm -hmm. living. And then as time went on, we started releasing songs. We did one, we released um, Blessings while he was there. And then when he left, we released Como For There. And then um, Better Than. So after Better Than, I told him, okay, Poyo, you know, right now, we have to upgrade a little bit. Your chain looks very rusty. So if you remember, or if you've been following him, you will notice he's, pr he's sprayed the chain at a point yeah. for it to look a bit more. So I spoke to, um, um, I don't know whether I should call him a tailor or a fashion designer, mm -hmm. to start making uh, bespoke dresses for him. We use this African prints, and then we make dresses for him, like very unique ones, so that he can wear on stage. If he wants to put a chain on, fine. But a chain should be limited to stage only. He shouldn't walk around town wearing that chain. It doesn't make sense. He should have a public identity or a private identity, and also an artist identity. There should be two different uh, people. He shouldn't be walking around on a normal day with chains on their neck. He said, no, he's attached. That's why people, leave. blah, blah, blah. It was a very Feel long that. talk. I'm like, okay, fine, bro. If you want to do that, do it. But you should know, mm -hmm. I, 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 I am the one. I told you, if you want to sign this contract, I need to tell you what to do. But if at this point you want to do your own stuff, then I can just leave everything for you to do if that's what you want. And he said, yes, he understands the industry now. This is the exact word he used though. All you need to do is to invest in me. 
and I said, I'm not going to lie. In Kwasi Asempa, I will catch him in Upuyo. In T, Udi Obey, and I should be putting money into it for you to do whatever you like. Why you think I pluck the money from trees or what? Mm -hmm. So it became very, it was something. Anytime I ask him to go to the studio to record a song, it's like he doesn't want to do it. When he does it and brings it and I tell him, oh, I don't like this part, change this part. He, he doesn't like, like everything was just like, he was as if he was doing it to piss me off. Okay. So I said, bro, you know what? Just take your socials. I transferred everything to him. I personally helped him to put his bank account details into the YouTube account. Uh, I I changed uh, the logins for the Spotify for artists. Um, I inserted his bank account, even the bank account where I'm the one who opened the bank account for him. Okay. I inserted his bank account details into the audio mark and uh, what else? And the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I verified a Facebook page for him. But mm -hmm. I gave all that to him because I don't need it. What am I going to use it for? Okay. So I gave everything to him. Within five minutes, I've, I get notifications, password change, password change, password change. I'm like, cool, no problem. So I called him again and I told him, well, this is the thing. Uh, the DistroKid account, I'm still paying for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not willing to pay for it anymore so i've downloaded all the songs from this uh, from the distrokid account mm -hmm. he can create a new distributor account and i'll give him all the songs to upload because mm -hmm. about my songs in there is like about four percent five percent the rest of the songs are not mine okay so i have no right owning those songs or i have no right taking those songs from him mm -hmm. Unless his previous manager wants to hold the songs fine. But I'm not sure if he, he's even interested in those things. Mm -hmm. So I told him that, and he said, okay, he's going to work on it. Then I remembered we had a song that we made Kubolo shoot a video for. It is very, very, very extremely controversial. Mm -hmm. So he was thinking when he leaves, then he can have access to that video and release and then probably go viral and then he is doing things on his own on his own and mind you i made him go to like two interviews one was with fifi pratt uh, yeah. at kingdom yeah. fm yeah yeah and fifi pratt asked him so who is managing you now this guy just said he is doing everything alone okay he kept saying that you know you can watch all his interviews. He would, he never mentioned Aboga Records. Okay. Because me, I felt like because he knows the contract wasn't like real. Let me put it like that way. The contract wasn't like something we actually wanted to do. We did it because of a situation. So that's why he kept saying he's doing everything alone. For me, it's cool. It's no problem. I don't have any issue with that. So at that point, he wanted to take that video with Kubolo mm -hmm. and release it. So I called Kubolo and told Kubolo, one loaf, that please, we have some unsettled issues. So mm -hmm. he shouldn't release the video mm -hmm. to Puyo. Mm -hmm. And then later I heard him badmouthing me, talking, talking about a lot of things, saying things. I gave this boy 1,000 Ghana cities to 2,000 Ghana cities, even when he wasn't releasing songs. Okay. Every month. I see. I gave him my car I bought when I came to Ghana. I gave that car to him to use for official trips. I told him not to use the car in the night. But all the time people call me and say, ah, Charlie, have you seen somebody they drive your car for a comedy club? Or I be you take give him. Two times. So I had to take the car away from him again because he doesn't have a license. If something happens, okay. it's all going to come back to me. So I took the car from him again. So things got very weird around that time and I just gave everything to him. So now he is trying to hack into my email to get access to the distro kit because he feels maybe I just kept the song there lying to him that I've closed the distro kit account, not knowing that 
when you delete or when you request for uh, account closure, it takes some time for the songs to go off the the uh, platforms. Okay. So he constantly tried hacking into my email, thinking I'm still holding the songs there and making money out of it. I warned him. I told him, no, he shouldn't do that. It's, it's, it's a crime. You don't hack into people's email. And then he laughed. He said, nah, how can I hack? Now me dem pese me shake ke. Me pese me shake no mo. I'm saying no man yes sir. Stop it. Two days later he did it again. And then I blocked I him. Oh, okay. That's when I blocked for you and we never had the conversation of when are you getting the rest of your songs or how do I send you the rest of the songs. So that's where I I I cut for you off like permanently. Okay. So, um, what was the duration of the contract? The contract was supposed to last for two years. So, that means um, 2023 December, that was when the contract should have been over. But oh, okay. since it left 2022, um, I had to write an official um, letter to him mm -hmm. um, so that when a label or someone wants to manage him, he can show it to them for them to have assurance that he's not tied to any label or any management team or anybody so that he can just move on freely okay. and those that was even before i cut him off we, we spoke about this like you know a, a big brother and a small brother thing you know we talked so would they just wait so be beside say into a new label no what now they are trauma they know i've written everything there so they know. Okay. And then I issued a restriction mm -hmm. when he started telling lies about me. Mm -hmm. That is when the restriction came out. Mm -hmm. Because you can't do something to your former manager and do the same thing to me. Okay. And with his new label, I know he went there and, you know, played that sympathy card with them. Mm -hmm. And they felt sorry for him and signed him. But yeah, I'm not trying to say uh, they made a mistake, but they should know how to do. That's that's not my job. They, are, I think they have their own brains, their own eyes to to see whatever that's going on. It's not my job to tell them what to do with him. But if they want to work with him, this is my story. Uh, Timer can also tell you the same story. They've never, he, he kept saying, we've never done anything for him. I personally flew from Ghana to, uh, um, flew from Belgium to Ghana to shoot mm -hmm. that music video with him. I bought a whole luggage of clothes and shoes to give to Poyo. But Poyo won't wear them because when he wears them, people don't dash him money. When he looks like a mad person, that's when people dash him money. So that's what he enjoys. That's what he likes. So this whole so music... By, um, sorry? So by estimation, um, how much would you say you have spent on him? Hmm. And have you recouped such an amount spent? Nah. I don't... I, I, I can't... But since I started making records, someone mm -hmm. advised me that, oh, I think you should be putting down records when you spend something. When we started, that was... Uh, yeah, I can't really tell. But that was like a few months before we had to part ways. Mm -hmm. It was 20,000, 20,000 and something. I think I wrote it in the termination letter. It was 20,000 Ghana cities and some coins. What we spent since the release of Goat Deer, it's, it's even more than that. It's flight money when he wants to travel to Kumase and all those things. You remember he was doing some um, TV series some time ago. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sometimes he, will, he wants to take a bus. I'm like, no, Charlie, you're a big boy. You should take a flight. I pay for his flight. He will mm -hmm. tell you. Mm -hmm. I try to, you know, make him comfortable. You know, he's not too big. But yeah, Charlie... Sometimes the way you appear to people is how people approach you. So I was doing my okay. best. Mm. Okay. So um, with deleting of the songs, 
from uh, to, uh, is it distro kid or distro kid yeah okay. distro kid so uh, one would ask why didn't you just let him update the payment option with uh, his visa or credit card but instead opt to take down the songs and then you know keep the email for yourself yeah with with how he was acting i couldn't trust him with uh, my details and with DistroKid, I don't know if you can just change payment method that way. I, I don't know if that works. Mm -hmm. But all I know is I have my stuff in there, my billing address, my payment, everything is in there. And okay. when you are behaving this way, he even had access to my passwords and everything. Okay. So, but at that point, I couldn't trust him again with any of my logins, any of my private stuff. Because I don't know his next move. I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what he wants to do. Okay. So, um, actually, uh, downloading the songs and re-uploading them shouldn't be too much of a problem. You just have to okay. upload with the same information and it should replace. And I think I copied the uh, some codes, ICRS code or something. something. I copied all those codes okay. to to make things very easy for him okay mm -hmm. all right so um from your estimation or point of view would you say he has been ungrateful to you well i i would say he's, he's been ungrateful he lied he lied about a lot of things i don't know why you know you could have just gone to your new label and start working you didn't have to you know lie about things that you yourself know is a lie he knows it's a lie. When he wrote that thing on Facebook, I used my page to comment. He quickly deleted it. And um, okay. someone sent me a screenshot of him apologizing or whatever. I don't know if it's an apology or he just wants to. He knows what he's saying is a lie. Vimbas. He knows it. Mm -hmm. And he knows this issue is deeper. I didn't. In, in, in the video, he said, uh, uh, you can see I didn't make music for one year. And people are going to assume his management held him for one year not to release me. But that wasn't it. You were homeless for one year. Mm -hmm. You were trying to get you a place to stay for that period. Mm -hmm. So why do you make it look as if we are we, we are the bad people or I am the bad I am the bad person? Okay. I was looking for a place for you to sleep, looking for money for you to eat. And you go, you go, you go on uh, Facebook and start making up lies. Mm -hmm. The time you started releasing music, right? I was the one who pushed that agenda. Say, Poyo, mm -hmm. if this woman will go do that thing, we could just do one. Mm -hmm. We could just release, release, release. But oh, man, some label, even if someone approaches him to sign him or talk to him about some deal, he will come to me, bro. Charlie, uh, this man say he don't want to sign you, he don't want to work with me. What do you think? You know, we discuss it. And he knows, he knows that's all I wanted for someone to handle him, for someone to sign him. And um, yeah, uh, he knows I'm not interested in his stream money. He knows very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, just for clarity's sake, okay. Um, mm -hmm. I believe uh, before you associate yourself with an artist, um, you might, you know, believe in that person or, you know, have your own motive. Uh, what made you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, believe in him to the extent of, you know, investing in him as well? Well, with Poyo, um, I would say I've, I've watched him grow. I was there when he started this whole thing. Okay. And the point at which he has reached for him just to drop and just like that not do anything again is it hurts me. And moreover, I was more concerned about his well being as a mm -hmm. person, mm -hmm. an artist. Mm -hmm. I saw him as a younger brother and he called me to ask for help mm -hmm. and I was willing to help him get back on his feet. 
So to invest, I think he has he has like you know he has a good 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 following. So if we push small and people know he's back in business or he's back as an artist, it won't be hard for people to approach him. And then I will just scroll back to my project. I have a project coming out, um, the Discovery, featuring up and coming artists. It's like a fourteen track. That was what I was working on when he came. So I had to put my project on hold okay. to start pushing him again for him to get to the point where I know, okay, from now on, I think you can take care of yourself. Even after the contract, after we signed everything, terminated everything, I told him, Poyo, I'll give you one more year mm -hmm. to rent. Mm -hmm. And then I think with that one year, you'll be able to stand on your feet properly and do things on your own. Mm -hmm. He told me, uh, not me, but he told the landlord, when I spoke to the landlord, uh, he told the landlord, oh. so I don't know how long he has been talking to the record label that signed him now, but mm -hmm. I'm convinced they've been in communication for a very long time. Okay. before they signed him because he was so sure he's going to nigeria he was okay. so confident he would travel outside ghana mm -hmm. so if nobody is giving you that assurance or nobody is giving you that uh, hope i don't think you'll be so confident in a way say someone will tell you i'll rent one more year for you for free i don't even need it don't pay me back and you say i don't want it well, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, you can put one and two together and you know what's going on. Okay. Um, so, um, listen, so, you are You talking... say believe in the stars. I know you have something unique. Mm -hmm. If he should build on it or if he should follow advice. A lot of people came on board to advise. Michael Lula, uh, Fifi Pride. Mr. Ernest, Ernest, uh, this gospel musician manager, um, Ernest, uh, I've forgotten his other name. Okay. A lot of people came on board to advise if they really, really wanted to contribute, but no, it didn't work. Okay. All right. So it wasn't so... just me believing in it. Yeah. Okay. So, viewers, we are talking to Mr. Alfred Abogan. Um, he happens to be the former manager of AYPOU. I believe we all heard um, what, what, what is going on between himself and then AYPOU, where AYPOU is making some, you know, statement via his social media handles. Um, I don't know, but um, with this that has just happened, uh, what is your take on investors who... You know, potentially would love to invest in Ghanaian art because many people believe um, some Ghanaian art do behave ungrateful to their managers when they hit their peak or their career begins uh, to go on a green. Mm. So I don't know what mm. you have to say about that. Vimba. Sorry, say that again. Um, there are a lot of people who hold a session that uh, Ghanaian artists are ungrateful. So therefore, they mm -hmm. wouldn't, um, you know, invest in their craft as uh, an investor who is still investing and, you know, a previous investor in AYPOU's uh, craft. What's your take on that? Well, I can say every artist is ungrateful, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it's, it's rather unfortunate we meet the ungrateful ones first. And I can also say most of them um become ungrateful when a lot of people are there and they start making promises mm -hmm. uh, because someone when we released um a lot of those came through we can play you it so we can give you better promo uh, we can do this better you know like do things come mm -hmm. so if an artist is um, greedy mm -hmm. that way, artist is greedy, i think they fall for that and um 
yeah, that's when things get weird because uh, with them, they feel like if this person can promise me something bigger, then why am I still here? Or maybe the big things are coming and the people are chopping it. So mm -hmm. I need to leave them and go to the people who are willing to give me a bigger share of the cake. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I feel makes them become ungrateful or disappoint people they started with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate um talking to you so i don't know if you have any last words you you would love to share yeah my last words may be advice to uh, him okay. um when you are somewhere and mm -hmm. supported you mm -hmm. just concentrate on where you are mm -hmm. don't try to make the other people look bad mm -hmm. because <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> because when goat was released people really supported you you didn't pay for tv interviews mm -hmm. you didn't pay for radio interviews mm -hmm. there are places that you go you don't even have to take out money to buy food people mm -hmm. were willing to do stuff for you people call you give you money people send you momo out of the blue the same thing he's describing right now happening in Nigeria. The mm -hmm. same thing people did for him in Ghana back then. Okay. And I can say it was even more. Mm -hmm. So if he moves from one place to another, mm -hmm. he should just concentrate on what's there, work his way out. Mm -hmm. Looking for public sympathy the wrong way isn't going to help him blow or become big or, you know, get a hit song. He should just concentrate on what he's doing and work his way out. All this and our mama misikada, obian ton pabwa mameda, obian ton tadise mameda. Look at me now. People call me. No, it's it's unnecessary. Okay. It's very very, very unnecessary. So mm -hmm. he should just and he should stay truthful to his new label because I can see those guys are really ready to help him. They are really ready to invest. He should just stay true to them. And not do what he did to me to them as well, because mm -hmm. after this, these people, <laughs> he's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all I have to tell him. All right, Mister Alfred Abogan, we really appreciate um, you um, having uh, this brief interview with us. We really, really appreciate. So um, we will revert to you if uh, need be. I'm always ready, and thanks for having me. Vimbaz TV